Boom. Ladies, gentlemen, bodies of water, welcome to the Alchemy Lab, and more importantly, the Alchemist's Toolkit. Yes, we are not playing d d today. We're not playing any RPGs today. We're talking about RPGs today. So we've been talking for quite a while about um, expanding this channel. And um, while we will have more games and things like that, as you're probably aware by if you're watching this chronologically, uh, we are almost at the end of a 5e storyline. There is a war happening and hopefully we will all be okay at the end, but maybe we won't, who knows. Um, but the Alchemist Toolkit is something that we've been talking about for quite some time. Um, and we want to um, basically empower DMs. Rules agnostic, but we've all been DMs for quite some time. And uh, we feel that we have something to offer the, uh, the internet when it comes to running good games, writing good games, building good games, and being good DMs all together. So my name is Lee. I'm just going to be Lee today. My name's Carl, and I'm just going to be me. And I'm Matt. Hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> And for the first time on this channel, he's not the DM. True, true. We all are. We're all the DM. multi ball. <laughs> <laughs> Extra special edition. <clears throat> so we're we're going we're going straight in on the deep end in in this uh, in this Alchemist Toolkit um, episode where we're going to talk about um, horror stories in RPGs. We're not going to go in with any you know nice floaty stuff like literally how not to do it okay this is uh, free hand-picked stories from each of our rpg careers where uh, it's all gone a bit wrong everyone can benefit from a bad example yeah absolutely, absolutely. so that's that's what we're going to give you we're going to give you three real bad examples yeah so uh, and also it goes through the uh, the timeline of D, &D <laughs> as well so my horror story comes from 3.5 uh, Carl's comes from 4th edition and Matt's was very recently in 5th edition and what a way to end as well on that story. <laughs> there is there is a famous ending phrase in that one and you'll all know it when you hear it. And we all remember it and we, mm -hmm. we all will remember it. And anyway, we all wish we before, we, uh, before we uh, shit the bed on the final one, we'll start with, uh, with 3.5. So this is my very first game actually. Um, I'd, I'd always liked RPGs. I was a big fan of uh, Final Fantasy and things like that. I'm just playing Final Fantasy IX at the moment, almost getting onto the fourth disc. Um, I'd always really liked it. And then one of my friends at school said, oh, have you heard of D&D? And I kind of heard of it. Thought it was for nerds because I'm really cool, obviously. Um, I'm so cool. Just look at me. Look at this guy. Anyway, um, I was like, yeah, yeah, OK, I'll try it. And uh, we were in, I think we were in year 10 or 11 at the time. So GCSE's exams are happening at this point. So we haven't really got a lot to do at school. We're supposed to be there all day, but we're supposed to be revising and things like that. And I never really did any advi uh, advising. Did I say advising? I meant revising. <laughs> yes, yeah, something like uh, that. That's how little of it he but did. I was Wait. advising. Yes, this is how we should run the school. So I haven't, I haven't heard this story in detail before. I, I, I know, I know of it. I'm aware of its, yeah. of its telling, because uh -huh. it's been. I've had the cliff notes before, but <laughs> I, I wasn't there to witness it. And I, so I'm, I'm curious. Neither of you were skin. actually. No, 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 it was just me. It was me and another one of our friends. Um, we'd been um, approached by someone who apparently ran games really well he'd been playing DD for a long time he goes right uh get the sort of the, the player's handbook you can play what you want um and we'll meet in the you know the language block uh we'll get into one of the rooms and we'll play some D, &D. and i'm like fucking brilliant okay this sounds great who could say uh, no? so i went sorry who, who could, could say, say no? no who could say no to that revise or rpg come on now um, so I went to the library, I went to my local library and uh, bought, and not bought, I, I um, took out the player's handbook, a big old weighty wedge, a tome of, uh, of RPG because 3.5, if you've never played it, it's, it's crunchy. It's a crunchy system. There is a lot of skills. There's a lot of things you've got to write down. There's a lot of stuff that you've got to put on that, um, on that character sheet. Yeah, you can brain um, someone with that. With Absolutely, yeah. You could kill, you could kill a man. You could kill a man if you I'm really. I'm surprised it's not a weapon in the in the actual game itself. 
Perhaps. I hit you with the road in there somewhere. Later on, we'll get on to how to create your own homebrew magical items, and perhaps we'll make the 3.5 edition book <laughs> be used as a weapon, a bludgeoning yeah. tool, you know? Yes, um, it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Plus one to your magics and, like, like extra <laughs> extra attacks and shit like that. Um, so I spent a long time on this. I'm like, fine, like, I've played RPGs before, but as you know, when you play, play them on, um, like on, like, on a system, on a console... They're all pre-made, really. At least back then they were. Anyway, we didn't really get into customization until much later. Um, so I made, I'm pretty sure I made a rogue. I like rogues. They have a lot of skills. I, I feel that I can be useful outside of it. Um, was, I used it to was the rogue called something, some kind of variation of Cassius? I don't think it was. No, I, I don't think oh I God. had the name. I don't was think I pre- had the name Cassius at that point. Was, it, was this pre-Cassius days then? I, well, no, it would have been it would have been after Cassius because so Cassius comes from actually the first time that we all met, actually. So the first time that that we all met was uh, we were. So I was just going to say I enjoyed role play because I sort of did quite a bit of acting through school. And oh God, met, yeah, yeah, we all of, met, yeah, on the on the set of Julius Caesar. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't play Cassius at all. I played Brutus. Mm. Um, but I really like the name Cassius. I think was it Samuel? Did Samuel play Cassius? I'm not Samuel sure. Samuel played Cassius. Play Ca- yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, Samuel. But I really like the names from that, you know? Um Cassius I think came a lot later. I think back then when I was playing uh, sort of Final Fantasy and things like that. I think my name was Drake back then. This was before Drake came out. So I think he basically stole <laughs> my RPG name. Um really so he might have been called Drake. Could have been called Drake, and that was the thing as well. I was like, I had to put a Y in it to make it a little bit cooler as well. D R A Y K E. Let's call him Drake. Yeah. Um, he was a rapping rogue. No, it wasn't really. Um, but I sort of put all this stuff together. It's taken me hours and hours and hours to do it. I went to the library to get it, so that's like another couple of hours to get up there and come back and everything like that. I've made the character. I've got like. Uh oh, we've we're frozen. The the game starts as any good um, as any good game starts in a tavern, okay? especially back start, in those days. We start in a tavern, okay. Uh, pro tip: you don't necessarily have to start in taverns. Uh, you can start wherever you want. Um, but we start in a tavern nonetheless. I am a guy hard into puberty at this point. I like women. Um, so the first thing I want to do, and this is what you'll find out a lot when you're a DM, sort of DMing young men, I'm going to go and try and <coughs> hit on the, the waitress. Um, mm. I think it might have gone well or something like that. But looking back, this was not what we were supposed to be doing in this, uh, in, in this tavern. Um, so we, we uh, quickly get into a fight in the tavern. Um, <clears throat> All, all hell breaks loose. Uh, the tavern then is is ablaze, and we die. Okay. <laughs> well, that's a bro. I'd, I'd heard that part of the story before, so I knew that one was coming. That was it. Jesus. That was my that was my first um, excursion into D and D. I think. Yeah, I think the next time I played was so, with you guys, and and I ran it. So I was like, okay, I'll try and run this. I can probably fucking run it better than I ran it there. <laughs> so to sum up the, the timeline of this, you find out you're going to be playing D and D. You get excited. You get the rule book. Yeah. Or like, so you spent infin- infinitely more time preparing to play D and D. Perhaps ninety five percent of my D&D. time. Yeah. Perhaps ninety five percent of my time was devoted to getting the rule book, understanding the rule book putting together the character, writing it all down, taking it into taking it into school. I'm in a tavern, we get into a fight, it all burns down, we die. So what can we learn from this from this horror story? <laughs> Don't burn down the tavern if it's the two guys first time. Yeah. Be also kind. Meant, also maybe help the newbies work out what the fuck they're doing yeah. before yeah, you even I- get in the game. Yeah, this is the thing, man. You've got to you've got to really ease new players into it. Oh Cause god, yeah. Because it... the, the thing is daunting the first time you play, especially old versions of D and D. Like three point five yeah. and four were anything centric. Like it anything was number crunchy. Central. Anything well, crunchy, yeah, is really tough. D 
Dean. So we'll take what we'll lead on to mine because mine kind of has a similar vein. Then, mm-hmm. so from as Lee said, mine is from fourth edition and kind of has a similar vibe. So I was playing. I I, I had some friends outside of school that I lived because I lived very. I lived quite far away from the guys when I was, we were growing up. So I had almost two groups of friends. Ones that I had to spend with school, which I spent a lot more time with, and a group that I'd known for a few years from where I lived, and we would hang out. Lucky. Meh. Two groups of friends. Meh. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, this is kind of the end of this second group of friends, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> I stopped hanging out after this. So they, they were big nerds like we are, and they'd all been playing D&D for a lot longer. Mm-hmm. They, they, they're up, they had older brothers that played it who taught them how to play it and so they, they played it as well one day like hey do you want to join us in the game of D&D likely I knew what it was I'm a massive yeah. nerd I'm a big Warhammer fan so to me I could work out roughly based what stuff was going on based on Warhammer because generic fantasy is generic <laughs> fantasy didn't D&D Where, start out as like um, the original idea was a minute yeah, I've got, was, do you know what? I've got a bonus story at the end of this. The first time I was ever introduced to Warhammer. I'm going I'm to fucking fault. put you in it, Carl. I'm going to put you fault. in it on the internet. I was bad at that. Um, <laughs> yeah, and D&D, D&D initially, I think, if memory serves, was originally meant to be a war game and then was turned into it was. Yeah. an RPG. Absolutely. When they first made it, it, it we had we had war minis games and they wanted to add a few more rules to it and make it make it more immersive as a game yeah. because war games, you know, it's fun. And by but now not- they've done a lot of stuff to the story and everything like that. Um, but they wanted to have this more um, immersive element to it. Yeah. That's the one thing exactly that you sort of have, it, care more about your fat, your army, basically. Absolutely. So let's say, oh yeah, we're going to play on a Saturday, turn up, we've got all the books. We can help you all out. That's fine. So, I turn up thinking, oh, we're going to spend like an hour or two as a group helping me get set up and then we'll start playing. No. I turn up when I'm asked to. They've already been there for 45 minutes. So no one, they, they got together earlier than they were telling me. Already was like, oh, why did you, you tell me the wrong time? I'm like, okay, what do I need to do? Bear on, I'd never played D&D at this point. I yeah. vaguely knew what it was. I knew it was quite complicated but I'd never seen the character sheet and I'd certainly never built a character. My friend who was DMing gave me the player handbook, one, two, and three, because there were multiple PHPs back in the day. Yeah. yeah. You had a lot more classes in, in fourth edition, similar to th- 3.5. Of course you did. You had all the expansions, didn't you? Oh, God, yeah. Oh, I remember like, all, all the expansions, had all, you had all, all your, the like, extra. prestige classes, epic yeah. classes. Fourth oh. edition shrunk that down to about yeah. 12 or 13 they still, but it was thirty levels in the game. I think not twenty. And there were so many expansions and like oh, so many Christ, classes yeah. and different and races and yeah. yeah. So I thought I just said, okay, what's the quickest thing and the easiest thing to build? Because I, I have clearly haven't you clearly haven't given me time to do this. So what is that? One of one of the friends generally tried to help me. He's like, look, fighter is pretty straightforward as as straightforward as it can be because it's. You want good stat here, good stat here, and a few basic things. I will help you with that. He starts to try and help me with that. Okay. The DM then got annoyed that he wasn't free to play. So they were trying oh, so they were to already play playing. The they, they were, were trying to game. play the game while I was trying to set up my character. So I had no. no idea what I was doing, no idea what the fuck I'm looking at, and tried to build this character. After 25 minutes, I had a rough sheet in place, and I just... I'm, my mate had said, my mate, the guy said, just bookmark the pages with your abilities for now so you can just flip to them and just write what they are on the top of the bookmark. So I did that. So I had a rough, at least I had a, I didn't have anything written down, but I knew where I could find all the rules I needed to know, basically. Did you know the DM? Yeah. You knew them all? Yeah. Okay. I'd known them all since primary school. Bloody but hell. Again, <laughs> but again, obviously, I went to a different secondary school, so we did, there was a bit, there grew a bit of distance between a couple of us because right. I hadn't seen them as much. Right, the okay. guy that was trying to help me was the one person I saw in the regular still. Mm. <laughs> but because he, again, because he, he apparently he asked beforehand, he told me his afters, but when he all turned up, oh, where's Carl? Oh, I, t- oh, I told him to come up later on, gives us a bit of time to just get in a, prop- a bit of proper game before the newbie turns up. And he, even he looked oh. like, game on the game. Why, invi- oh. so, why How invite dare you? him if you're going to exclude him? Oh. Anyway. Shame on the unit. So I tried to play. It was fucking hopeless. I had no idea what I was doing. 
because no one was explaining as we were going, I try and do something. Some of it was the most arbitrary stuff. Oh, can I just try and open this door? Oh, can you roll me a dice? I'm opening a door. Is it locked? No. Oh. What? I was like, okay, what do I need to do? Just roll me a d20 and tell me the number. So it didn't even tell me if I, need, if I could use skills or anything to adjust this. So I'm rolling a mm. d20. Not fun. No. So I'm sitting after about 20 minutes of this month. Already on board. Yeah. Because I'm frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on. We get to our first combat. And obviously, D- combat in D&D, everyone knows, is already slow. Even it's in 5th even it's in slow. fifth edition, as streamlined as they have made it, it is slow. In fourth, you, you know that if you watch our videos, <laughs> uh huh. <Yeah. clears throat> Combat can take an hour for a single encounter sometimes. In fourth, it's even worse. Because... I remember one of the ones, the first ones that we did. I remember one of our, one of like the boss battles that I run. It was about two hours. Yeah, That's so long. Man. Yeah. Well, look, the problem you have is uh, even, I mean, in fourth edition. I've had to remind myself just to make sure I was right when I thought this. A lot of classes essentially had at will cantrips. Yeah. So you didn't have like once a day and long rest and short rest. It was. You had at uh, will, you had encounter, will, encounter daily. dailies, and a utility yeah. depending on your class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> realistically, you were never just attacking. You were using yeah. an at will because there was no reason to just attack. There was a lot of so, stuff that you could do, and this is why it took so long in fourth yeah. e because there were, you had analysis paralysis basically. Yeah, didn't you? Basically, that was the yeah, issue. Yeah, every round you're like, what is the most beneficial thing I can perform? At What's the best point? thing I can do? It it really appealed to the min maxes, didn't it? Yeah, you know, absolutely it's, did. Yeah. So I try and do my first combat. Like, okay, I want to attack this guy with this strike. I think it was I wanted to use. Oh, God, it might have been dual strike or something like okay. that. Yeah. Off the top of my head. <clears throat> Let me just double check. Yeah. So I, I was like, oh, you want to use dual strike. Bear in mind, I was given no time to read any of the fucking books to know what any mm. of this stuff actually did. I saw dual strike. I thought, oh, okay. It's going to let me do two attacks. Twice, once, yeah. Because the ranger can do that in 4th as we know from our campaign, that's well, all the four. That's all the Ranger does. Came a fucking machine gun. <laughs> he got a he got an, he got a bow of uh, a bottomless bo- a quiver and became a fucking machine gun. Because that was every my attack, bad. That was my in, bad. I'm gonna notch two arrows and just bang every time. Anyway, I tried to do it. DM goes, "What are you what weapons are you using?" I was like, "Oh, I'm using a sword and shield." Because again, straightforward, easy build sword and shield. You can't have dual strike, huh? Can't have dual strike. Dual strike requires you to wield two weapons. You can't use the weapon and a shield. And of course, Stupid. me not knowing the rules went, yeah. okay, I could punch him with my shield, though. It's, I mean, in theory, yeah. In real life, it happens. Yeah. People punch with a shield. That's why fucking shields have bo- Viking shields That's what they had had metal spikes. bosses on them and, and yeah. spikes in the middle of it because they'd yeah. smack you with a shield. Mm-hmm. The guy who I was still reasonably friendly was like, yeah, he's got a point. And come on, it's his first go. Let him, let it ride. Uh-huh. It's not going to change anything. He's just going to attack. No, he can't. He has, to pick, he has to pick another ability. So then he goes, right, okay, well, come back to me then, I guess, because I've got to go through all of these to know what they actually do. Yeah. I, basically, it was fucking horrific. Every time yeah. I had to do everything, nothing was explained to me. If I was doing something wrong, I would be told, I'd be treated as if I should have known like the mm-hmm. first fucking game no one's told me anything oh. I think I was there for I built the character for 25 minutes because I didn't really build the character I rolled hit points yeah. and I rolled stats and everything else was just I'll read the book when I fucking need to yeah yeah. I think by the end of it <laughs> I'd played for an hour and after an hour I went yeah you know what guys I'm good I'm, yeah. I'm gonna go oh. and I could see I could see my friend who I was still really close with looked looked as like, oh, that fucking sucks. Because if I'd actually been shown how to play, probably would have enjoyed that. Yeah, so yeah. Be able to build a character well, I wanted. Well, we did. We did, Carl. We played a yes, 4th E game for about exactly. two years. Precisely. As proof and we never finished we it. Because nope. 4th E is so long. <laughs> oh, God, it is. I think and the last thing we did was, was fly. So this was the last thing that we... So I basically... Ran like a Tiamat Bahamut 
thing. Spoiler alert, guys, Tiamat and Bahamut were there. Um, we never got to those, but that's no, what we, we didn't were get, doing. we didn't get to that point. But the la- one of the last things we fought was like a Leviathan or a Kraken. And a Kraken. Uh, we had a... Kraken, we had a yeah, we, we had... They had a um, an airship. They wanted to add the Kraken stuff to the sails. There's no real rules for that in 4th E. So I went, all right. That's cool. Yep. That's dope. Sure. You know, just like Carl's thing. Like, we was like, well, I've got a sword and shield. Yes, it's not in the rules, okay? Yes, you're going to have law- rules lawyers sometimes, and sometimes you're not. But we kind of have a rule, uh, like a home rule rule here, which is the rule of cool. And I'm pretty sure it, that might be in the book. I think it might be rule, rule zero or rule one or something I think, like that. I think there's something along those lines. In there's the something around it. It's At like, least, I think in fifth on 5e there is. I don't think it was yeah. in fourth. I think, yeah. again... Hmm to streamline for new players they added that in for to the five saying hey, well, to be honest i mean cool. for, if, you, if you're a new player and you're coming into and you're coming into a game that way hot. and you don't know you're coming in hot <laughs> like yeah. you, you have to make allowances you, you just have yeah. to yeah i don't Absolutely. know I, like that story that story genuinely like it was like a, a gut punch guy it's just That's embarrassing, horrifying. isn't it? Yeah, it's so it's, embarrassing. Like I said, but, I, the, but for your friend as well, like, yeah. so he was the one that you spent the most time with, and he's yeah, like, oh, brilliant, I can get Carl yeah. into this game, and this guy just we fucking hang out just more. dunks yeah. on you yeah. for an hour. Legitim- legitimately awful. I knew all of them from primary school, oh, yeah, man. and I very much got the impression by the time I was leaving that, oh, he did that on purpose because he doesn't want me around. Yeah, I, uh, because I. Because I knew this was the problem with that group. With some of those people from that group, was like they see they saw me as having left the group because I right. went to the same secondary school as you two gentlemen. I didn't yeah. go to the closest school to me. I went to one slightly further out because I didn't want to go to the school where my older brother and older sister went, and where yeah. some of those teachers knew my sister so well. Her ex history teacher had her A level coursework photocopied and stuck to his desk, and I'd seen the desk, so I knew it was there. Why did he do she, that? She dropped one mark at A-level coursework, so he did it. Oh, yeesh. Oh, so yeah. she was, like, brilliant. She was yeah. fucking dope. Yeah. So I'm then not, you're going to have to I, do six years of being incredible. Compared. Being like, you're not like your sister. I, 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 I am going to spend six boy. years of my being, being compared to my brother and sister. And my brother is very much like me. If you piss me off as a teacher, I will act up because I don't have time for your shit. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, the third, I sit... The third child has arrived. The yeah, pretty child much. Tyrion. Arrived. Tyrion has arrived. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I I basically said to my mum my and dad, when it came to sexual, like, I don't want to go there. I don't want to right. spend six years being compared to them at all. I yeah. want to go somewhere else. Well, I mean, and that's how I met you guys. So it yeah. worked out right in the end. Well, the, everything. See, everything about that story is just as a, as a, as a DM for like three games at the moment that is that it breaks my brain it's, they went, it's textbook bad we're, yeah. we're not going to give this new player any assistance whatsoever anytime let us take ulterior motives out of it for a second yeah mm-hmm. you're not going to give a new situation. player who has never played D D before a crunchy let alone system played in our, who... we're going to just chuck the books at him we're not going to give yeah. him any help making a character we're not going to tell him what he can use and what he can't use no time. We're already playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm trying. You're, you're artificially making him speed, making him speed up because, well, they're already playing. I need Social to hurry pressure. up and get yeah. in. Yeah, it's clearly, I'm causing. I'm holding up the group. Even and what, what level were you? What level was your character? Three. Okay. Oh man, so you've got three. fucking. You, you got to understand the level up system. I had to build a level. And... I had to build a third level character, having never played the game before. DMs. Here's an easy way. If you if you're really hell bent on getting this player right in, do a pregen. Yeah, pregen the character. Pre-gen. Do a pregen. Uh, explain what, what that pregen means. Give it yeah. to them so they get a taste of it, and then Best help them make a character at another time. If you're like have, deep in it, pregen. Or yeah. have, or if you want them to make a character, have them come early or yeah, talk to them beforehand. Sit with them. Help them through it. And yeah. Sit with them. Explain what they're going to do. My, my, my personal preference in that situation is if they've never played the system before, they've never built anything in it before, is have a chat with them outside of the game before it all's let to happen. Hey, this is the system we're playing. 
here is what the rules of it are, or here's a basic overview of how it works. Mm. We and, and offer it to them. Offer them an option. Say, what do you want to do? What we can do is you can tell me the kind of character you want to play. So we'll go through the classes together and all this sort of stuff now. Mm. And then I can build you a character and then leave name and shit blank. So you can play, you can put in that whatever you want, but everything else is built based on how you want to play. Mm. Or we can take time beforehand, me and you will get together and we will build the character together. So I will sit, I will guide you through it. This is get, Give it to them a little bit as well. This is the advantage nowadays, right? Because yeah. back back in the day, back when we were young, we're back when we was young whippersnappers. Back when we, <laughs> back when we had to walk, good old walk to school in, up uphill both ways. Back yeah. in the mid two thousands, we we couldn't like nowadays. You, if you've got a new player who's never played the game before, you can go, okay, I'm going to give you a rough thing. Go watch these people on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Go, like, or go I, on D and D Beyond. <laughs> I've had I've had new players who've been completely new to D and D, and I've gone, go watch the Ops Venture, because when they started, yes. they were all new to it. Yeah. And this I is sort argue... of what's going on, and this is what they're going to do, and they break it down that way, and it's easy to watch, and you get an yeah. idea of, okay, this is what this is. And then when you can just launch it, and then when you come back, you're like, okay, I, I think have I have ba a basic idea of what I'm doing, a yeah. basic idea of my options, so I can, this, I can do this it. This is hilarious how we're really showing our age because we didn't really have YouTube back then. It was around, <laughs> but you had no. It was, it was there. You had no RPG like, content. Like, like it was like it was like um, like that. Oh, it was oh, just like it was just all memes. Yeah, like the, the panda that sneezed. YouTube was good and, back then. Well, oh, well, we could. Uh, that's that's a whole. That's another story. Perhaps for they're another taking, channel. They're taking the Hobbit to that's, that's yeah. <laughs> that's I? a tangentiment <laughs> class. Oh god, that's a throwback. Yeah. Do you remember the dance remix version of that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's guard. how old G we are. Yes, I do. The, the the days of contraband and um, well, new grounds. anyway. Gentlemen. Anyway, we're getting nostalgic. We're getting nostalgic, guys. I'm going to have to bring this whole thing down, I'm afraid. <laughs> with, well, uh, what, so what lessons story. have we learned so far? What lessons have we learned so far before we all just sort of cringe? So <laughs> the two lessons we've learned... I mean, the main lessons we've learned so far are, are concerning new players. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you've got a... D&D &D is, is not for the faint of heart. There is a barrier no. to entry, and you've got to and lower again, that barrier as much as you can as the DM. Or as just well, a player to, in the game. To, mm -hmm. to, to, new, to new DMs as well. That is even 5th edition. As friendly yep. as 5th edition has become, it is still number crunch. Yes. Because you have it's, to it's know tough. it is a lot of rolling for a lot of things and it's understanding what you can and can't add. What mm -hmm. is what my proficiency is added to. What happens if I don't have this? What if I'm doing this? D and D is always going to be a crunchy system because of how because it's using dice rolls. And off of that story, don't have a player roll to open a normal door. No, <laughs> don't if have you, players it, roll yeah. for things that that if it's a ba if it's a basic deserve. action that requires no difficulty, do yeah. it. You know how to basic do it. actions or things that you absolutely want them to do anyway. Yeah. Effectively, if you don't want that player to possibly fail, do not make them roll. Don't make them roll. Because it, the, as soon as you introduce a roll, you are creating a circumstance where that player cannot achieve that action. Hmm. You're just making the story long. You're just yeah. making it boring. Hmm. Uh, this I, I want to go say, to the bar. I want to go to the bar and talk to the barman. Roll a strength athletics check. Yeah, it's quap all of a sudden. Yeah. Basically. I rolled a five. You fall through the floor. You fall like, through the floor. Like, and what I will say to that as well, around that point of don't make them roll for things you've not prepared to fail. That applies throughout a campaign, not just oh, yeah. early doors or anything. It yeah. also applies to how you, tell a, how you tell your story. If you have a story beat that they need to encounter for the story to make sense, they need... I know there's this weird debate about railroading versus letting players choose. If you're going to tell a cohesive story that makes sense to the player and they need to have information to do that, they need to have that information to do that. So if it, it's about disguising that a little bit, you, which you will be a different to topic different ways later on to get the information. Yeah, yeah, but ultimately that information has to get to them. Mm. So again, that's a topic for another video. 
Yes. But I think it's a discussion worth having around this idea of free choice and railroading because it's... I like that. Mm. A story coming to you soon, a video coming to you very soon because I've got lots to say about that. Anyway, and, and I think one thing that comes from my story, so I was a horny teenager. I think it was about 15. <laughs> I wanted to chat with the barmaid. Uh, my DM didn't like that. Now, there are gonna, like if you're, you know, r as a DM, this is all about new players, but as DMs, there are going to be times where you're running players who are horny teenagers and Matt may or may not have run into this in in not just horny horror, teenagers, just horror horny. stories or not. I'm not sure. I already know the story. But th th there needs to be a point where there's a bit of lax. You don't burn down the bar, okay? Yeah. Don't burn down the bar, okay? Mm. Have have some kind of consequences to it, you know? if, if it, we, we do have to sort of parent players sometimes, you know? You People get a bit too big for their bridges and stuff like that. And they sort of go, you know, like you've heard the word murder hobo, where they'll just go around and kill shit or steal shit. And it, it completely takes away from your story. Okay. This is this is about you having a nice time as well. But also if someone's going if everyone's all invested in that story and someone's really going off like left by like left field, mm. then you need to bring them back somehow. And there's loads of really cool ways you can do that. I think that's another story to rein in mad players. Mm -hmm. Um yes. I think that's a really good thing that we can do. There's loads of different really creative ways that you can do this and you don't have to burn down a bar. I have okay. I have a group that are that are a bunch of they are there is a chaos group and I've had to rein yeah. I have had to rein them in. And we I've hear about, about them how all the I've time. To do that. We hear about them all the time, and like it is completely different to our stories. So on the uh, the ship, for example, the, one of them died on the ship. They exploded the ship. Was this chaos group, Matt? Were they exploded oh, this is, the this ship? Is a different group. This is a different group entirely, I think. Oh, okay. Oh, this God. is a different group entirely. <clears throat> right. This, I mean, there are potential horror stories with other groups. Uh. But we can we can get to those. The main horror story I want to tell That's good. is is <laughs> it has, it's so it's it has a title. It's awful. Yes. This story I... is this is the tale of the glazed donut. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, bodies of water. This began so COVID happened and the lockdowns happened and there was a big boom in online D and D. Um, people went through Roll Twenty, they went through Reddit, they went through all sorts of places to find cool. online groups. Yeah. And and they got into it and you could easily, well, not, I say easily, if you're a DM, you can get a party like that. If you're trying to play games, you, it is like hunting for a job in a, yeah. in a crashy economy. Yeah, it's as, real tough to find a game as a player. It's really tough. It's really yeah. tough. Um, but I found one. I found a game. And <laughs> I, ran a, I ran a character that I'd run before with these guys. Um, one of my favorite PCs a little paladin, uh, no, a little cleric, a little pure-hearted cleric called Ozick. Ozick's great. Bless his little, bless his little kobold heart. His little cotton socks. He just wants, he just wants to help people and heal people. He's a He's lovely just a boy. good dude. He's, He's just a, good a lovely dude. good boy, lovely good pure-hearted boy, pacifist as well. Yes. Which I will say is also another topic for another time because it is so much fun it's so, as weird as it sounds it is so much fun having a non-combat character in something like D, &D where mm. combat is a core mechanic we played with ozik someone else and, was running oh. our game it was so good ozik is ozik's lovely <laughs> remember your d4 now <laughs> here's the here's the problem here's where um, it was, it was i had i started gaming with this group of people, I really love RP, and there was like one other person in the group, the only girl in the group, who also kind of engaged with a bit of RP as well. And so I was like, okay, well, well, everyone else is sort of like min maxi combat ridiculousness. So the girl was playing a male character, an androgynous male character called Wolf. And Wolf's thing was Wolf liked to get rogered by every NPC Wolf possibly could. 
Now, the DM... We've got to get railed. The DM, in this case, um, made a big deal out of really attacking the character's flaws. So the, the girl had enough sense to put, likes to get rogered by literally everything, as a flaw as her, in her character. Also, I suspect she was trying to basically vicariously cheat on her boyfriend at the time. Um, I yeah. had pacifist. That's how it is. I had pacifist as a flaw because the unwillingness to fight in a game where people are going to be fighting is a flaw. Tough. In a way. I mean, it's a tough mm -hmm. flaw, but it is a flaw. Mm -hmm. Now, the DM only attacked these two flaws. He attacked no other flaws in any other character, mostly because I think none of them fucking bothered to put flaws on their sheets because they were just min-maxing character fucking nonsense, right? So here's what happened. Attacking Ozick's flaw meant he made combat harder for everybody because he basically just added more enemies in an effort to make Ozick get violent and attack stuff to stop and basically to burn through his healing spells so he had no other choice but to attack the the enemies around otherwise people are going to die so i'm like okay well that's gonna that's tough on ozic that's tough on the character but i mean it's it's certainly a, a thing you know and what the other thing this dm loved to do is um fudge rolls unashamedly fudge rolls like he fudged Never every fucking roll and it was and it was a pain in the ass right so why roll at that point yeah i i don't know even if he was rolling at this point because this is the thing there was a point where our party got ambushed and he loved to ambush us he bloody loved to ambush us mm -hmm. um and Basically, we got an ambush round on us, and Ozick got hit twice. The first hit took him down to about about four health. Literally, like, he, he had 20-something hit points, took him down to four. The second hit on him was a crit, and I was like, Ozick's dead. Ozick is fucking dead. The crit, I think the DM realized how much he damaged me the first time. The second attack, which was a critical hit, so you double the damage, or you roll two damage dice, did right. three points of ah. damage, putting okay. putting Ozick at one hit point. And I was like, bullshit. That's too you're, perfect. You're bullshit in there. Like, That's way no too way, perfect. No way he would have to have rolled double ones, and their attack modifier would have to have been a one. Yeah. Yeah. And... Like I got, and like the first time I got, I got hit for like twenty-one points the first time, which would, it's like, which, which would have meant he'd have, which was, which would have meant he'd have, yeah, have that, that to work, he would have had to roll a twenty for that to be a one. So yeah, so already, so things, so I was, I was in this game for about probably like two or three months. Um, so I've already mentioned this DM loved going after characters' flaws. So he went after Ozick's flaws by make by basically punishing the party. He went after Wolf's flaws by fuck for. basically throwing male NPCs at Wolf and lavishly describing the intricacies of Wolf getting bummed over and over again. And literally, this was about it took about 40 minutes in a three-hour session of him describing bumming wolf what, what does and, that mean for people outside of the uk now um anally anally having anal penetration. With, anal penetration with wolf and it would always end the same way <sighs> my bodies yeah water. yeah it would end with the npc withdrawing and finishing onto wolf apologies and the description was always, Wolf, you look like a glazed donut. Every single time. Now, I can... I would almost forgive it if there were... If he at least had a thesaurus. And a varied up the descriptions of being a covered. A different baked in, good. Yeah. A different, Just a different description of being covered in baby gravy. Any description. <laughs> but it wasn't, you look like I'm a glazed donut. I would have, I would have been 
I, I would, I would have maybe lasted one more session. I don't know. You look like a shame, shiny bagel, for example. <laughs> maybe. I mean, he did. You don't even have to go with baked goods. It could have been anything else. You look like varnished wood. <laughs> oh, we're terrible. Oh, no. We can also do a video on this if you guys want. We can go for our sources. <laughs> what just the source of, of, of shiny <laughs> items? Now, Should this be really how you want to do it? Now, Let's here's not the do thing. That. We're not even at the horror part yet. Oh my god. That's the worst thing. We're not even at the horror part. The horror part was what made me leave. Finally leave. So, we, Ozick, bless his little heart, encountered a politician in this city that we were in. Um, and this politician appeared as a voluptuous naked lady. Classic. Um, turns mm -hmm. out that this voluptuous naked lady was not a lady. It was a 14-year-old girl. Oh, yeah, it was a child, wasn't it? Oh, God. And, I remember, um, yeah. And Ozick was basically made to to keep... to basic, was basically sworn to secrecy um, over who this person actually was, right? Because it was like a high... She was like a high-up politician in the, uh, in the city. Um, so the party, meanwhile, were going after a cult and that was operating under, like, in the sewers. We went out there, we went in the sewers, we killed this big toad thing, and there was a big celebration afterwards. Now, I... Now, we were... Most of the people playing were from America, which means that the sessions were happening at, like, from 10 at night till maybe, like, 2 in the morning. I had work the next day, very early, so I was like, <laughs> at about midnight, I went, I'm gonna have to go, guys, because I am, I have work the next, I've worked tomorrow, I can't really stay, I've gotta be up early. They were like, okay, see you later. So I leave. And when I wake up in the morning, come downstairs, get set up for work, I read the Discord, and I read what happened while I was asleep. What happened while I was asleep was, Wolf, whose brain was full of glaze. Donuts. Now, the player knew that this character was a 14-year-old girl. Obviously, the character didn't, but the player did. Um, the DM had the 14-year-old girl be intimate with Wolf, and then the only female player at the table, and use modify memory to erase the memory of this happening from wolf so effectively it was it was an assault yeah and that, that sexual assault yes and because ozik knew that this person was not what they appeared all the blame went on ozik all of the blame from the party and I was like, um, why are you blaming me for this? Like, it, genuinely, if I'd been there, and the DM should have known this, but I think mm. neglected to um, neglected to take part, essentially. He was too busy wanting to violate uh, Wolf. Mm. He um, basically... It was like, well, uh, Ozzy knew that Ozzy knew what she was, so so why didn't he say anything? And it's like it, it literally never come up prior to prior to this happening. It had never come up, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Oh, so this is so how this isn't how is this Ozzy's fault? That's ridiculous." And it just kept going, and I went, "Okay, cool, find another healer," and I left. I just left the server immediately, and I was like, "Nope, not doing that again. I'm out. Mm -hmm. I am yeah. out." So that is that is the horror that is the the horrible tale of the glazed donut. It's funny until it's not. Yeah. 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 So what can we learn from that? I mean fuck. <laughs> uh, okay. So, so the look, first bit look, the, if you, the, if the funny bit if you're going if you're going to deal with that kind of encounter in game which you should really be clear with the whole party before you start doing shit like that. First off, yeah. 
and don't make it a regular occurrence because that's not fun for anybody other than maybe the player if the player was so inclined which it sounded like the player was at that point it's literally only it was literally just an interaction between that player and the dm yeah, yeah. and everyone else if, is just if, twiddling their thumbs hence why if you're going to do something like that it happens once and it's short you don't need a full 40 minute fucking description of what effectively becomes a 50 shades of gray scene by the sounds of things um because that's just it's just terrible for everybody else no nobody else wants that like if you wanted that you would just go online and find that i don't want it you don't right. want it in, <laughs> exactly you know just <laughs> yeah it, i'm trying to be i'm trying to be delicate here because i don't want to mean that no one wants to have that in dnd some people do well, well maybe they and do it, carl but everyone needs to be in it you know yeah like ultimately the, the, you need to discuss that across the group of hey i kind of want everyone to needs to be in like it this. yeah everyone needs to be like yo it's an orgy we, or nothing shall we come on should we just come on each should we make like come like a really big part of our campaign yeah. if everyone says yes i would <laughs> like to make come a big part of this campaign a lot of fucking a lot of orgies can you imagine you reading you know, that in the in the spiel at the beginning we're running 5e um it's going to be lots of cum. based lots of come buckets of cum. Lot, so much cum. Lots of cum. Of, the thing is i guarantee if you search hard enough in roll 20 you would find that description you don't even need to search hard in roll 20 exactly to find I, I wouldn't i wouldn't be shocked if a dm has spent a very long a dm had a very long time working how they can convert the combat rules into sex rules yeah. can i tell you what i learned from this experience no please um, if if shit seems very very sketchy, just leave. Yeah. Just go. Yeah. And to, and recognize that if there are warning signs early on, things are not going to improve. No. Nope. You just got to get the fuck out of there. And like you, seriously, like you can. The thing about online D and D, it is so easy, so so easy to find a shit group. Or to build a ship group. It is so easy. So if things are going a certain way, and you are not the DM, so you can't just go by. Just get just get out. Just pull yep. pull the rip cord and get out. Yeah. And that is another video that we're mm -hmm. gonna do. Um why players leave. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, because on the other side of that as well. If you are the DM, um, don't be a dick and try to make one specific character a fool, though. Because right. at, at, that, at that point, from a player perspective, if I was you in that situation, I, know I would not have done what you would have done, but it's hard to feel like that's not targeted at me, the person. When oh, you yeah. are actively, Absolutely. when you're effectively telling the, part, the rest of the party, oh, this character knew everything. I told him everything, like, but you didn't. And even if you did, you set up an in-game reason why they wouldn't be there. Ozic didn't tell you because Ozic didn't fucking have a chance to talk about it with any of you. No one asked the questions. Because Ozic was asleep. <laughs> well, it, it's, it's not like it's not like it was some. It's not like a trivial reason. It's like I, I have work in the morning and it is like midnight here, so I have yeah. to go to bed. Like that's not being a dick. That is. I have to go. I to bed. physically can't be there. Um, so another thing is another thing to learn. Um, don't play games with Americans if you're in Europe, because the time Tough. zone, the time zone, especially if the DM's American and they're playing in the evening, just don't do it. I, I tell you what, I, I did. I, I played a game. Uh, I think it was uh, Cyberpunk. Uh, I played a cyberpunk game with, uh, I think they were all American, but I think they played it in the morning or over lunch. So it was good. Uh, yeah, I mean, with Roll20, you know exactly when people are going to play. You know, don't don't wake up into the wee hours to play because this does not, this, games can overrun. Point, games can overrun. Point, if you, yeah, if you're, if you're talking about the wee hours of the morning, uh, you're not going to be, from, from the rest of the table as well, if you're tired and they're obviously still in quite earlier in their day, it's going to be hard for you to interact with them and them to interact with you in a way that's going to be fun because you're going to be yawning and shattered and just not in, not engaging because you're tired. And if you're it's, tired, 
time to walk away. It's, t- it's tough enough for me to do two hours in front of these boys, you know, because they've got jobs and shit, and I've got, like, me, we, we start, like... Me and Carl are yeah. nightmares. We really yeah. are. I, I, we, we start at like eight and I have to go to bed at like 12 and I'm old. I'm old. I'm, I'm from the time where YouTube wasn't really, it was just memes. I'm going to be a dad soon. How do I feel? I'm not going to sleep in it for four fucking years. Your choice. Your choice, Carl. True. Fair point. Your choice. That's why I don't bring it up often. Um, mm. But yeah, it, again, these are all topics for other videos. I think. I want to say, I want to say just before we go though, we are not a sex like negative group. No. Okay. Oh no. I I, been... I remember in in a um, in a system that we have created, which will come out eventually. Um, <laughs> it's taken me about ten years. Ten years. We will counting. play. We will we will play we'll a play. game where <laughs> where the system is played. Um, one of the first things I did um, in my was basically, campaign. yep, and it kind of equals a crit basically uh, i i created a prostitute i i, I created a prostitute in mm-hmm. a uh, in a cat house because we were playing mm-hmm. at western um uh, so we guys not... you guys have have gotten your end away in uh in streets of me yep absolutely oh, oh yeah I, of course yeah. i did of course the i did twins. i just had prostitutes in my in the fucking yeah and thing. and it's just like okay we know what's happening so yeah, yeah so, okay set set up yeah move on yeah. It doesn't need to be a long thing. Yeah, the no. player wants if the player wants to do it, and and, and it's, it's not just and... be, it's not just because of the time constraints of of filming these. Mm-hmm. Like we, you know what you know what's happening. You know what's yeah. happening. Case in point, Lee's one in the campaign he's talking about there. Literally, it was a he was in a cat house. Again, it's a new system. We were all re- re- relatively new to playing. It's so none of us were quite sure how this was going to work. And I went, okay, sure, you want to chat one of them up? Let's give me a social check. Yeah. Draw me a, give me a card and, Killed I, it. and and the way the system worked at the time it's been obviously changed up since was we, I also had to play a card again we did it we did it blind didn't we yeah it was a blind draw from the deck it was a blind from the deck oh Carl you're giving you're giving a lot away Carl but we did a blind draw I fucking killed it and I drew and, back and and, and epi- I, I epic success it. yes and uh <laughs> and that's what happened yeah and i rolled but that was perhaps I think it was what um, perhaps about 30 minute. seconds of the uh of the play time you know yeah, and, and if I you guys want to run if you guys want to run fuck D, do it yeah but make sure everyone's on board mm. yeah and i mean if, if, if and doing... be exciting with it don't just keep calling it the same thing that's lame that's and a lame narrative technique and, don't mm. drag it out for that long because no one wants to hear you describe sex for 40 minutes. Unless they do, Carl. True. Mm-hmm. Unless and they on do. that note... There we are. Unless they do. Don't talk about sex unless they want to talk about sex. Don't drag it out unless they want to talk. Basically, read the table. Yes. <laughs> read Discuss the table <laughs> in terms of experience, in terms of desires, in terms of focus. I think that's basically what we get out of this. Yep. Read the room, read, read your players... Room. Ultimately, just, that will be a reoccurring theme throughout this series. We need to talk about this: is discuss and read your players. Yeah, because that's what you need to do for a lot of this, this stuff. You anyway, guys, going. here we are: the first Alchemist Toolkit RPG Horror Stories. Now, this will be a uh, semi-regular or maybe regular occurrence on here, um, where we will be talking about um, DMing, world building. Um, and all things like that. System agnostic. I know we've been playing D and D at this point, but um, we try and make it. We try and make it fluid. We've like played between us all. Anyway, um, I've been Lee. Carl's been Carl. Matt's been Matt. Um, Matt's on Minds. Mm-hmm. That was our author. Thing? Check me out on Minds. Uh, I'm on Minds too. I don't I'm know not. where I am. Carl's not. Anyway, take it easy. This is the Alchemist Toolkit. It's signing off. See ya. See you later.